Hi y'all, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com and today I am here to teach you how to sew this fun planner caddy. This particular design will hold your pens, your eyeglasses, and your posty notes of all different shapes and sizes. And what makes this project unique is that there, I'm gonna dump it out here real quick. There is a center divider in there, and then on that center divider are some loops that will hold your pens upright, and then the divider, of course, separates the front and the back of the compartment so that you can contain your various planner tools. And the reason that I designed this project is because I am launching a new planner community. If you watched Behind the Scenes on Friday, then you already know about that. For everybody else who is joining us, this new planner community will be centered upon my affiliation with Tools for Wisdom. Again, I go into detail about the features that the Tools for Wisdom Planner offers you, and I am giving two of those planners away. The winner for Friday's contest will be announced here in the comments and in the live text chat that happens when the tutorial premieres. And then you, as a first time viewer to this video, have the opportunity to win whichever planner remains. And so for details on how you can enter to win the second planner, please watch behind the scenes. Um, and I will link to that down in the notes. But for everybody else that came to learn how to sew this, I wanna go ahead and get started on this project. So I am just going to quickly pick up the mess I made when I dumped out my planner goodies on the table. And then I'm gonna tell you what pattern pieces and supplies you will need for this adorable project, which comes together really quick, by the way. Okay, so for mine, I am using quilt weight cotton material. You're gonna need a total of four eight by eight inch squares, and then two six by five inch rectangles. And so we are going to begin with the rectangles. These two pieces of material will create that center divider. And so you're going to position them right sides facing and just sew along the long edges. So the six inch edge. And then you're going to turn that right side out and press it nice and flat. There you go. And then you're going to take one inch strap webbing. And for this project, I am going to incorporate two pieces of that one inch strap webbing, one on the front of this divider and one on the back of the divider. So you're going to have to lay that down on your surface and align everything. In the prototype that I showed you, I just had one strip of the strap webbing, but what adding the second strip will do is allow you to hold more pens or pens on both sides of the caddy. So I thought that was a nice addition. So once you have that strapping aligned on both sides, just stitch right down the center of the strapping to attach the two pieces of strapping to that center divider. You're gonna wanna go forwards and backwards a couple times to make sure that's nice and secure. 
Okay, and that's what it looks like. And the edges are open, so you don't have to worry about those at the moment. So now you want to work with two of your eight inch squares. And what you will need to do is notch out a one and three quarter inch corner from the bottom of all four of your eight inch squares. It, right now, I'm just working with two of those squares. And so these are the interior front and rear panels and I have notched out the one and three quarter inch pieces from the bottom of that. And that will give the caddy its depth. And so take your little center divider and position that so that it is one inch up from the notch and all the way to the left. So you're just working on one side, so one inch up from this notch and then flush with the side and go ahead and stitch that in place. And then you're going to align that panel with the opposite side and your panel will push back a little bit there and that's fine. You primarily just wanna make sure you're keeping that one inch of distance from that notch and then go ahead and stitch down this opposite side. And so you should have something that looks like this now. And the next step is to then take your second interior panel and position that so that you are again just aligning one of those sides so that one with the divider already attached is folding in on itself. So you're just gonna stitch down the one side and then you're going to align the second side and stitch. And so now you have something that looks like this. And now you're going to align the base of this and stitch right across there. And then you're going to pull those corners open to align the side seam and the base seam and stitch right across there. And you repeat that for the opposite side. Just pull that tight and align the side and the base seam. And for this whole project, you can use 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. The main thing with the seam allowance for this project is just be consistent. Whatever seam allowance you use for the exterior, use for the interior, vice versa, because then everything will line up nice for you. So now the interior is constructed. You'll just take that top edge and fold it over about a half an inch. And if you're just working with the quilt weight cotton, it should press fine with your finger or nail, no problem. Now we're gonna set that aside for a few minutes here. And the exterior is also crafted from the eight inch cotton squares. I am using quilt batting for mine because I want this to have a little bit more structure. So I have backed those with the batting. This is much simpler. There's no divider or pockets or anything. You just position these panels with the same one and three quarter inch notches, right sides facing and you will stitch up the sides first and then the base and then align the corners to create that depth. Same 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then just trim away some of that excess seam allowance from that top 
part of the exterior and this will allow you to turn that exterior right side out, poke out the corners and then fold that top edge inward. And when you use the quilt batting, it does not press nice with the nail, but you certainly could use an iron. If any of you are curious, I'm stowing my clips inside of a hard bound eyeglass holder and it works really good because you can just Clomp it shut, and I found that at the Target dollar section. I think I paid three dollars for it, but it is really nice and it keeps everything inside of there, and it's cute too. Okay, so I've taken that top edge and I've folded that inward, whatever uh, distance you use for your interior should suffice on the exterior, and then I want to fit that interior inside of there and I'm going to begin by aligning those side seams first. And then I give it a little tug and align at center on the front and center on the back. And then once those points are secure, you can reach inside and fit that a little better. The interior does not have any batting, so it will naturally cling to the batting that is backing the exterior. So it's worth it to take a little bit of time and kind of push those fibers together so that it stays nice and neat. And then just give a good pull like that. And you could stop now and just sew on the top, attaching the interior and the exterior, or you can sew a little handle. And I have two options for you on the handle. You can do the little short handles, which I really like because then that allows you to open it up and see what's inside of there. And you could just carry that. It's also would allow this to hang up on a peg or a hook. So that's quite useful. And when both are pulled together, it kind of closes in the little pen tote. Nice and semi secures the contents. Another option would be to create kind of like a basket look like a with a single handle and you can carry that with a little more stability. That would also allow you to hang it up on hooks as well. So the choice is entirely yours. This strap here measures 12 inches long and you can cut it in half to create the two smaller handles or leave it long and do the one long handle, which I'm going to demonstrate on this. So the strap again is 12 by four and I just took that like I make all of my straps, pressed it long ways in half and brought the raw edges inward to meet on that center press line and then folded that over and pressed again to fashion the strap. For this one, I do have a little bit of the Pelon 808 inside of there to offer the strap some stability and so, after you have your strap pressed and interfaced, then go ahead and begin by stitching down that open edge first and then the opposite edge to create a finished strap. And that's how the strap comes together. And then you can insert that in at the side seams or at the front and back. It's just totally your preference. I'm going to insert mine at the side seams and you're just tucking that raw edge in between the interior and the exterior layers and then pinning or clipping that in place and that's how it looks. 
And then the next step is to put this on the machine deck and stitch all the way around that top perimeter to secure the handle, the interior, and the exterior. I will reinforce the handle a couple of times with the back stitch. And it's all done, super cute. So you can see the difference between the two handles and it does change the look of it. So maybe make a couple of each. Um, this one I think is easier to transport. So if you want to move the contents room to room, this would be a better design for that. This one, however, works really great on the desktop or if you wanted to create a wall organizer, this would be really wonderful. I hope you enjoyed the project. I just want to show you planners that you have a chance to win. You could win this gorgeous ocean scene, which they are calling the dolphin or you could win this swarm sunset scene. Um, both, as you can see, are brand new, sealed up. Special thanks to John at Tools for Wisdom for donating these for the giveaway. I'm really excited for you all and pretty excited for myself because this is the one that I get to keep. It's stunning. I give you a whole tour of this exact planner in the aforementioned video. And then one more time, I just want to thank my friend Kathy for sending me the Australian fabric. That's what the exterior of both of these caddies is crafted from. And it is stunning. Each time I work with this fabric, Kathy, I find something else that I love about it. So thank you, my sweet friend. So we'll see some of you on Thursday when we wrap up my ongoing master class. I can hardly wait to see your projects. I will see some of you on Friday for the live stream over on the group Facebook page. And then that morning I'll have my weekly blog post on sospire.com. And then I will be back next Tuesday with another inspired project. Pretty sure we're gonna be starting our serger series then the blades that i ordered for my serger have arrived i need to get those put in and then start sewing with that machine again so i'm pretty excited about that i really enjoyed working with the serger in the past and i'm looking forward to seeing what kinds of projects and purposes we can come up for with that serger slash overlock machine if you do not have one, you still may want to tune in for the next few videos because it may inspire you to purchase one. If you do not want to be inspired, definitely don't show up. So anyways, thank you again for spending this time with me. I hope you all have an awesome week. As always, the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. So I just want to give you all the finished measurements really quick on this sweet piece. It's three inches wide and four inches across the front and the back and five inches tall.